Welcome back to our channels, Warriors. We are still growing. You haven't had Warden James Hill, who's fired 20 CEOs in the short amount of time that he's been at Donovan. Smash that subscribe button. Go ahead and have him smash it right now. First and foremost, let me give a shout out to the following patrons. Hernan, Michael Moore, Gia, Abuelitas, Ermi, Irma, Winston, Alejandro, Trilero760, Grant, El Skid, Nathan, Hobie Cat, Mika Boy, Lead with Love, John Wick, Marshall, Charles, Albert 12, Soul Store LA, AI Vega, Esquiel, Big Bad 48, JT, Nova, Jack, Linda, Guerrero, Michigan Wolverines, Mikey 559, Marius, Chevelle 66, Gigi Abuelita's Journey, and Dallas Herrero. As you can see, you're probably the only one that's not signed up for that Patreon. Make sure you hit that link in the description below. You do not want to be missing out. This episode right here, man. Hector, why the COs be tripping in there? Why the COs be acting like that's their house? Why the COs be acting like that's their toilet paper that they be giving out? Why, why, why? Well, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you, right? I just happened to work for the California Department of Corrections for 16 years. Kind of know a thing or two about this. Okay, hmm. COs will go through phases, right? Nobody, I think, comes out the gate um, kind of like a truck with it, wanting to chill. Mostly they're young COs. Mostly they want to fight crime. They got the mentality. They got the badge. Ooh, that badge is so shiny. It just whispering in their ear, fight crime, fight crime, fight crime. Good luck, buddies. Good luck. So you do want to be enforcing the rules as you're new. Well, you're going to go through phases. As you're new, everybody knows you're new. Everybody. I'm talking about the other. Your partners know you're new. The inmates know you're new. The medical staff know you're new. The cockroaches running through the kitchen even know you're new. Like, ooh, stop, take a break. Like Joe's apartment. Everybody knows you're new. The way you walk all fucking straight, rigged, your haircut, your backpack, your Uggs. I mean, it's, there's no way for you to be new and pretend you're not new. You're going to stick out like a sore thumb. So you're going to get tested, man. Unfortunately, you're going to get tested. It's just the way of the beast, the nature of the beast, just the way it is. The inmates are going to want to see what you are about as an individual. They're going to want to see if they can get anything from you. Trash bags, bed moves, cell moves, um, extra chemical cleaner. Just see what they can get, right? Hey, I'm going to throw this line out there. See if, you, see if this little fish caught bites. Little guppy. There's that phase. Right, so you may feel, I felt, I can only speak in first person here. I felt that I had to hold my own and establish myself. Of course, I was a little young and wild with it, so that might have been a little, and a different time back then, 2006, 2007. So, that's one aspect. Now, I will tell you this, that shit gets old fast. When your sergeant, your lieutenant are yelling at you, what are you doing? Why'd you find this weapon? Now I got to stay extra. You think you're all that in a bag of chips. You think you saved the world by removing this weapon from the yard. Little do you know, there's a hundred more out there, kid. <laughs> Here we go. That's kind of where it goes, right? But I'm going to tell you why we really enforce the rules. Why it, and it's not to get a conviction in court. I'll tell you that much. And it's not to look hard in front of our partners. I'll tell you that much. And it's not to suppress or oppress the inmates in blue. I'll tell you that much. So, heck, what the fuck is it for if it's not for all those things? Here we go. In my videos, you'll hear me where I'll say an inmate is holding cuffs. And as a lieutenant, I would have to go over there and talk to them. Threaten them with extreme violence. If they did not give me their handcuffs. Well... You have to understand, at that point, the officer has already spoken to that inmate and 
had negative results of getting those handcuffs back. At that point, the sergeant has already spoken to that inmate and had negative uh, results of getting those handcuffs back. So now the lieutenant comes in. One step above the lieutenant is the captain. Then you're going to go down the whole fucking road. list. Inmate, please give us your handcuffs. Please give them back. Please give them back. Well, Hector, they're not your handcuffs. You didn't buy them. They break all the time. You can go get them replaced. You can go here, the armory. You can go here. What do you need those handcuffs for? Why do you need to feel the need to play tug of war with this inmate over a pair of handcuffs? That has nothing to do with the fucking handcuffs, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> it has everything to do with, I have an eight-hour shift. We have an eight-hour shift. Right, we don't get to stay extra. You can't stay extra. You shouldn't stay extra. You get in trouble for staying extra overtime. Oh, they be watching the overtime. After my eight-hour shift, a, a whole new crew is coming in, a whole new crew of officers, sergeants, and lieutenants. The last thing, the last thing you're going to do is leave your mess. That's your mess. This happened during your watch for the next watch, right? That's called the lift program. Leave it for third. While that did happen often, that's not some that's not a practice that I like to do. And the majority, probably 95, 98% of staff members don't want to leave problems for the next shift. Here's why. Number one, that's gonna make you look incompetent. Number two, that's gonna make you look lazy. Number three, it's kind of like here, fuck you. I'm the neighbor. I'm going to go throw a whole fucking trash in front of your door. What are you going to do about it? You're just not going to do that. Number, I forgot how many numbers we're on. We know, right, working at a prison, especially Donovan, especially Charlie Yard, I'd say, we know that they are going to have their fair share of incidents. They're going to have five, six incidents in a shift. Hector, that's not possible. Go to hell with your five or six incidents. Seven or eight. I'll fucking one up you. Seven or eight incidents in the shift. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. And that's not even counting these type of situations where inmates are holding cages. Inmates are holding handcuffs because they're what it looks like for you guys that don't be knowing what I'm talking about is in ad seg, they got to move around in handcuffs. We put them in handcuffs and we escort them into the cell. A normal routine would be like, hey, back up to the food port and let me take off your, your, your handcuffs. Well, they keep them. They hold them hostage and they say, nope, I'm not giving you these back. You want them? Tell that AW plumber that's now a chief deputy warden at Salina Valley State Prison to come give me a TV, a radio, a hand job, an iPad, a back rub, and a phone call to my loved ones. So here we go. They know the routine. They get it. Ooh, they get it. They begin the rub downs, the tug downs, the happy endings, the whole nine. That's why they be holding the cuffs. So now you guys know, it has nothing to do with, hey, I'm a fucking officer of the law, male or female, or both, 2023. It has nothing to do with acting hard. Priority reason is we're not going to leave a mess for the next shift. Second is, I don't reward I don't reward bad behavior. And this is something I tell my daughter. Oh, there's people in prison that will reward bad behavior. The pl AW plumber. Now he's the chief teaching the rest of the AWs. Good luck. And he's one step away from a warden. So don't think, Donovan, that he's not going to come back as your warden. But keep telling you guys, I've seen this. I've seen this story over and over again. Wow, here we go. Now, what's the other reason, Hector? Here's a good. So that's what I would say, man. Give me the handcuffs or I'm going to smash every fucking bone in your body. I'm going to smash you. I'm going to pile drive you into this concrete floor and your body's going to turn into dust. And they would look at me like this motherfucking lieutenant just done bumped his motherfucking head. But here you go. I don't want to be smashed into smithereens. Yeah, neither do I. Right now, would I do it or would I not do it? It all depends if he gave up the cuffs or not, or if he resisted. It all depends. However far he wants to take it, we'll take it that much farther. Right? Here we go. 
Oh, shit. Oh, it feels fucking good to have some fucking freedom of speech. Anyhow, who says America's bad, right? Who the hell said America's bad? Speaking of America, I went to go look for my fucking, my mask. My daughter be coming into my room when I be editing videos. She looks like she fucked this all up. Don't trip, baby. I love you. Oh, my God, daughter. That fucking glove right there is signed by Ryan Garcia, the boss. So, I'm going to take a picture. I'm going to take a picture of my daughter wearing that mask, man. She'd be funny sometimes. So, the other reason, the other reason. This is a good one, too. Delta Yard Level 3 SNY. I'm a lieutenant. I have some good officers over there. Officers that are, that are not going to look for trouble. Officers that are not going to stir the pot. Officers that are not going to cause havoc. But when, but when an inmate steps to them and brings it to them, oh, they're going to handle it perfectly with finesse. And this was one of those times. You know, I love to drink coffee and shop on Amazon as a lieutenant. So I'll be posted up. And then I hear code one inmate resisting staff in front of Charlie uh, or in front of Delta Dining. Boom. Code one. The yard goes down. I walk over there as an incident commander. You know, you're supposed to step in front of the program, but there ain't really much going on. So I just walk a little further. I hear the inmate yelling on the ground. (laughs) fuck you bitch blah 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 whatever whatever okay normal normal all dusty and shit my bugger took a ride it looks like rolling around on the dirt saying i'm gonna spit on you and we're all saying like you don't want to do that don't do that go get a spit mask don't do that my bugger comes to his senses right after a while these guys come to their senses the adrenaline wears off the anger wears off everything can fucking all honky dory after a minute or two. Cool down. Everybody relax. Relax. So what had happened was, I have to tell you guys right now, my acting captain at this time was a buffoon. The acting captain buffoon that I let borrow my captain bars. And then he turned around and wrote me up. Now this guy is straight paisa. Straight paisa. English is like his 10th language. Oh, man, this motherfucker struggles with with it all, right? I'm not knocking the guy. Well, actually, I am. The motherfucker just struggles. Struggles to breathe. Just struggles. Motherfucker is just having a hard time living, right? Just, here we go. He did not know policy, one. He was a suck dick puppet boy, still is, two. There was an inmate walking into the chow hall. Now you're supposed to tuck in your shirt and remove your headgear. The inmate is walking. He's kind of a little EOP-ish. Kind of a little wild with this guy. I had a rapport with him. But as wild as this fucking inmate was, I had a rapport with this kid, this guy. The officer tells him, good ass officer too. Tuck in your shirt, man. The inmate looks at him and says, fuck you, make me. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. The inmate, the officer tells him, come here. I'm going to pull you over now. Now, imagine a cop on the street. You, you, you don't put a signal out. You go crazy. We're going to pull you over. Come here, man. Clearly, you must be under the influence of something. You're acting bizarre. You're saying some off-the-wall shit. Come here. I'm going to pull you over. I'm going to pat you down. The inmate doubles down, triples down. Fuck you, bitch. You ain't going to do shit. I said, make me. Well, when he does this, he steps to the cop. And when he steps to the cop, he creates an imminent threat. Well, per policy and procedure, an imminent threat in order to gain compliance, overcome resistance, subdue an attacker, and effect custody, the officer proceeds to pick his fucking ass up and dump him, flip him upside down and dump him on his face and his head. Boom! Hulkamaniac style. Holy shit, code one in me resisting staff, fucking staff assault in front of Charlie or Delta. I keep saying Charlie, Delta Culinary. That's when I come in. So I go out there 
And I say, what happened? They fucking troops. They all tell me the same thing. You need me tell me this. <laughs> yeah, this happened. My bad, LT. I got out of, kind of got out of line right there. Woke up on the wrong side of the cell. Woke up on the wrong side of the bunk. Ah, it happens. Don't trip, man. So Hector, Hector, was it worth it? Was it necessary? Did that officer really have to pick his ass up fucking higher than the sky and drop him on his face? Yes. Oh, Hector, go to hell. You shouldn't have said that. You're missing the whole point here. He didn't do it because he was a hard ass enforcing the rules of the tucking in your shirt. And that's what this captain got twisted, this acting captain. And I had to correct him in a meeting. The stupid fucking warden at the time, who I can't remember because they cycled through. It might have been Madden. That guy just played a lot of golf. Didn't do shit. Coward. Spineless. You know, the whole nine. Or the whole 18. 18 holes, as they say. Oh, fuck. You know what? It was Pollard. Oh, even worse, man. It was fucking Pollard. Madden came afterwards. It was that horrible fucking regime. So they say, we don't want you guys using force over shirts not being tucked in. It's like, cool, we're not using force over shirts being tucked in. And he's like, the idiot buffoon captain, acting captain, like, yeah, yeah, he did use force over the shirt not being tucked in. Like, no, he didn't. He used force when that inmate stepped to him and got within his fucking reach created an imminent threat step to him right i already told you officers be getting punched cold clock stab slashed the whole right back at you first second thirdlies that's when he used force per policy oh well yeah then he has a fucking meeting he has a meeting with the whole staff talking about that you can't use force and i stopped him i said don't you ever you need to stop right there captain Telling the officers not to use force? That's not even fucking policy. Like, what are you doing? He was trying to appease the higher-ups by sucking dick and trying to... See, what this guy didn't understand is the higher-ups are going to tell you some bullshit. And as a supervisor or manager, you're supposed to filter it, figure out what's real, what's not real, what's policy, what's not policy, and then decides if you want to let the lower enlisted know, right? If it matters or it doesn't matter. If they're speaking buffoonery at the top, I just let them speak buffoonery at the top. I never really... Um, bothered my troops with it. They knew policy. They were not acting out of policy. Where some, yes, they got in trouble, they got fired, excessive use of force, unnecessary force, stupid shit like that. Stupid shit that they should not have been doing. But we go back and forth, back and forth. We don't want you guys using fucking force over a blue t-shirt. He said he didn't use force over a blue t-shirt. He used force because the inmate stepped to him and created a threat. Motherfucker could have punched him. He has history. He's a staff assault. I know who that inmate is. He was wild with it. Okay, well, we don't want you guys to do nothing. We just want you guys to write them up. Let, let them tell you to fuck off, fuck you, go to hell, and you let them walk in. I'm like, nah, that's not how that works. We're peace officers. Like you, This is what I told them. This is why we affect rules. Chow time, you have a lot of inmates walking at chow. You have one, two, three buildings at a time, two, four, five hundred inmates on the yard at one time. They just saw this. Everybody's watching everything. They just saw an inmate walk in, an officer tell him something, and the inmate just told him to fuck off. <sighs> this is the truth. This is the truth about prison. If you do not address that problem, if you do not address it in either which way, the following day, you're going to have 200, 300 inmates telling telling you to fuck off. Okay, so when it came time for me to enforce rules, that, that would be an enforcement of the rule. Unfortunately, it resulted in the use of force. Right, there's multiple ways to skin a cat. You can write a 115 rules of violation report. You can counsel, verbal counsel somebody. Well, heck, you couldn't you verbal counsel him? 
Well, he could have up until the point he got in his personal space in a threatening manner. Yeah. Then you're not being counseled anymore. Now you're protecting yourself from fucking harm. It was more of, um, I have, for me, I have 30 years to go, 28 years to work here. I don't want this to be a hard 28 long years. It was already hard enough, as you can see with the buffoonery I was dealing with from my own people up at the top. But, yeah, you don't want to be a, a rug, a stepping stone, a doormat to, to you. It's just not going to work. It's simply not going to work, right? So it has nothing to do with here's the rules on paper. Well, yeah, of course, you can't let people wild out. Motherfuckers can't be stabbing other people or hiding weapons in their butt or self. You cannot be doing that, right? But that's not what the motivating factor to enforce. There's usually something else. There's usually a twist or an added extra, like an inmate holding cuffs and the shift is about to be over. An inmate telling you, fuck you, make me tuck in my shirt. And then stepping to him. I think if he didn't, if he didn't step to him, he would have uh, he would have verbally counseled him. But the fact that he had the whole uh, look with that. The message for today is, man, I appreciate you guys letting me come on here and speak, letting me letting me come on here and speak and, and hearing us out, hearing me out, hearing a different side out perspective, because like this is long overdue, man. This needed to be said like. This is therapy for everybody, for me, for the viewers, for everybody. And it's just like, hey, man, this is the truth. And it's entertaining for the people that never been through it. Like, man, what a wild fucking place. What a horrible place to be. Those people are corrupt criminals. They need to be locked up, right? And that's just the administration. I haven't even talked about the inmates yet. With that, keep pushing forward.